It's been a year since the last fight. You've had such a long career. Why was it important to you to get this rematch with Paul Craig? Ano da primeira luta com o Craig, que é uma carreira muito longa. Ah, eu acho que é uma revanche que eu sei que mora ia acontecer, né? Por causa do resultado que deu empate, né? Então, é, veio até rápido. Eu imaginei que ia, ia é, durar um pouco mais. Mas eu estou feliz com essa luta. Well, that's a rematch that I knew was going to eventually happen because uh, we drew uh, our last fight. And as a matter of fact, it happened even a little faster than I expected. But uh, I'm very happy that this fight is taking place. You said after the last fight that you felt like you maybe fight two or three more times. Can you confirm, will you fight again after this fight with Paul Craig or will you make that decision after the fight? Mm -hmm. É, na verdade, eu sempre encaro a próxima luta como se fosse a última. É... Mas eu não sei ao certo a hora que eu vou parar. Eu estou no final da minha carreira, devo fazer mais umas duas lutas e parar. Mas assim, é, não, tem, não sei certo o número exato ainda. Well, actually, every time I go into a fight, I, 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 I look at my fight, upcoming fight, as the most important thing, kind of my last one. But I really don't think about it and don't make plans on when I'm going to retire or how many, how many fights I'll do. I'll just take it a fight at a time. And after the fight, I'll think about it, but I'm happy to continue with my career for now. You became very well known being a part of Shoot Box in Brazil. I want to ask Jennifer Maia, who trains out of Shoot Box, is fighting for the title on Saturday. Just what do you think about her fight and how she's representing the team? Eu acho ela muito boa, uma atleta top. É, há muitos anos ela se desponta, começou em Curitiba a despontar. Eu acho que ela tem grandes chances de ganhar o cinturão e representar o chutebox com alto estilo. Well, I think she's a great fighter. She's a top athlete. She, she has been standing out uh, for quite a while already, starting out, standing out in Curitiba. And uh, I think she represents chutebox very well and has all the tools to represent uh, shoot the box in, in, in excellent style and excellent fashion in this fight and, and hopefully bring the bell to Kuritiba. My final question, um, another, another of his countrymen retired, Anderson Silva. I just wanted his thoughts on the fight and just his career. You know, obviously they were also coming up at the same time in Pride too. Silva, uma outra lenda, né? Se aposentou. O que você pensa da carreira dele? Eu acho que ele fez uma carreira brilhante, é, ele foi o grande campeão nisso no UFC e parou na hora certa, eu acho que ele não parou na hora que quiser, né? Ele parou no momento certo, que eu tenho certeza que ele não vai se arrepender de ter parado hoje. Well, surely uh, Anderson had a brilliant career, he was the biggest champion ever in the UFC and um, I mean, I'm sure uh, he knew uh, when to stop, so he's, he's stopping because that's his decision, so you got to respect uh, that, and I'm sure he's not going to regret it because he had a brilliant career. Thank you, Shogun. Thank you. We will take the next set of questions from Mike Bond with USA Today. Hey, Shogun, this is the seventh rematch you've had in your career. You're five and one, and the only loss was to Dan Henderson in a fight you were doing very well in. What makes you so good in the rematches? Sua sétima revanche, que está 5 a 1 revanche, foi a única derrota. Entendi bem. O é, que, que faz você tão bom nas revanches? Eu acho que a revanche você consegue estudar melhor do adversário, né? Tanto você quanto ele, né? E. Puta, eu não sei. Na verdade, eu me estudo bem. Se Deus quiser, eu vou, vou conseguir vencer mais uma revanche sábado. Well, I think when you do a rematch, you're able to study your opponent a little better. Uh, he of course can study better as well but but i don't really know uh but i'm happy with it and i hope that i'll be able to win one more rematch on saturday when you look back at the first fight what do you think you have to do different in this one to make it a clear win Well, I think uh, I need to be more uh, decisive and uh, make the rounds a little more clear. Uh, 
that's basically what I have to do. Great, thank you. Appreciate the time. You. We will take the next set of questions from Carlos Contreras with Millennio Diario. Carlos, please go ahead. Mauricio, uh, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Well, uh, this is, uh, I mean, uh, this is uh, like uh, something pending that that you have uh, in particular, but uh, it's also what the fans uh, want to see uh, what happened. How, how much are you expecting this fight against uh, uh, Craig again? I'm going to be a good fighter. I know he's a good fighter, a good fighter in the category. I expect the best of him. Well, I expect a tough fight. I know he's a, he's a tough guy, a, a, a tall, big guy for the weight class and a dangerous fighter. So I expect a tough fight and I expect to beat him. And uh, you still uh, big among uh, the fans, not only uh, Brazilian fans. So uh, how do you feel to still be part of, of, of a big pay-per-view event and having all this love from the fans, uh, not only uh, from Brazil, as I said? Ele tem muito carinho dos fãs, não só do Brasil, mas do mundo inteiro. Está aí ainda hoje, num grande pay-per-view, sempre né, em chat e tal. Estamos contentes de ter até hoje esse carinho, esse reconhecimento. Não só no Brasil. Eu fico feliz e com certeza meus fãs, minha, minha maior motivação. Well, no, I get very happy and, and uh, surely my fans are my biggest source of motivation. Obrigado, Mauricio. Thank you. We will take our next set of questions from Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Hey, Shogun. Uh, the last fight ended in a, in a draw, and we have a lot of debates about in this sport. Uh, kind of a two-part question. What did you think of that, that score, and, and do you have problems with, with some of the scoring we've seen in MMA, some of the judging we see in MMA? Maurício, sua última luta com o Paul Craig teve um, um placar meio controverso aí, né, dos jurados, um lado meio controverso. O que você acha do julgamento no MMA geral? Você acha que ainda tem muitos jurados ou falta de né, critério? Como que você vê isso? Eu acho que sim, eu acho que não consigo entender dar empate para a luta. Eu acho que eu venci, todo mundo, todo mundo achou isso, mas eu acho que realmente, eu não sei qual critério eles avaliaram Quem deu o empate, né? Mas eu tô aqui para provar que posso vencê-lo mais uma vez. Yes, for sure. Uh, I didn't agree with the result. I think I won the fight. A lot of people think I won the fight. And it's very hard to understand the criteria uh, and to understand what criteria led uh, them to score a draw in that fight. There's no consistency. But I'm here to prove that I can beat him. And that's that. Is there any part of you that misses the uh, the prize that scored on the entire fight versus round by round that we have here, you know, in the United States and a lot of other commissions around the world now? Você de alguma forma sente saudade do julgamento do prize que gerava a luta como um todo ao invés de round a round como é colocado inteiro nos Estados Unidos? Sim, eu acho que o jeito mais justo de avaliar a luta é a luta num contexto geral, não round and round. Porque tem pessoas que lutam com essas regras, então eu acho que o mais justo é avaliar num contexto geral. Sim, yes, actually, yes. I think it's it's a more fair, if you can say, situation to evaluate the fight as a whole, because when you look at the fight as a whole context, it gives you a better notion of of of, uh, of who was better, and some guys are able to fight within the rules and exploit this round by round and, and, and quick uh, a little edge, you know? So, yes, I think the, the overall judgment, uh, it's more fair and indicative of what's happening in the fight. And, and Shogun, you, you've mentioned, you know, where you're at in your career, but you're a guy that has fought so many great fighters been around for so long. And when you look at a lot of the guys you fought or fought alongside in those pride days, they've retired, they've walked away. What is it that you've been able to do that you're you're still able to not only compete, but to compete at this level? I mean, obviously still, you know, ranked light heavyweight, you know, at this stage when so many of your, you know, your peers, your contemporaries, the guys around you 
uh, are not, you know, not around anymore. Hoje se aposentou ou não consegue mais estar é, tá no topo, estar tá em evento uhum. grande, estou contra ranqueado e tal. E você está aí até hoje ranqueado e lutando e ganhando. O que você acha que você fez de diferente ou faz de diferente que você consegue estar tá até hoje em né, alto nível e contemporâneos acabaram não conseguindo? Eu acho que é minha equipe que é a grande responsável e minha dedicação, acho. São essas duas coisas. Eu acho que não é fácil estar tá no topo desde 2005 praticamente, então eu sou um cara muito realizado com a minha carreira e grato a Deus por tudo que Deus me deu. Oh, I think uh, my team and my own dedication are the the, the biggest uh, key factors that uh, made me continue to uh, be relevant and compete at high level after so many years. It's not easy to be uh, on the top of the game since 2005, pretty much for that long. And um, I think, uh, but but I'm very happy with my career, and very thankful to to God and to everything the sport has been giving me, and being able to continue to do it at this level. And last, uh, Shogun, of our conversation because you're a legend in your own right. There's been a lot of discussion lately about who is the greatest mixed martial artist of all time: John Jones, Khabib Nurmagomedov, George Saint Pierre. Fedor Emelianenko, as a guy who has fought in all eras of the sport and, and fought around so many great fighters and done so many things in your career, I'm curious, who do you believe is the greatest mixed martial artist of all time, in your opinion? Muita especulação sobre quem é o maior de todos os tempos, né? A gente tem as pedras, a gente tem o Lando, tem o John Jones, tem o Pierre, etc. E tal. Na sua opinião, quem você considera, se você considera o maior de todos os tempos? Eu poderia o Fedor. Well, I would say Fedor, Emilianenko. Thank you, Shogun. Thank you. And we will take the last set of questions from Cote Cruz with the For to Win podcast. Hey, Shogun, how you doing? Do you hear me? Good, thank you. I'm doing fantastic. How you doing, uh, Eduardo? Good to see you as well. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. There has been a lot of adaptation in the UFC rules compared to the Pride rules. Is there any rule would you like to see back in the octagon, like in the Pride days? Tem muita diferença de regra entre o Pride e o UFC. Tem alguma regra do Pride e qual que eu gostaria de trazer de volta? Sim, os pisões de meta. Yes, uh, the soccer kicks and the foot stomps on the ground. Well, uh, you are a former light heavyweight champion of the world and a 2005 middleweight Grand Prix champion. Could you talk about what does that mean to you? Você é um cara que foi campeão do Pride GP e campeão do UFC. Não sou realizado, com certeza, e nada melhor do que isso, realizar um, um grande sonho. Well, that represents uh, to have my dream fulfilled. I think nothing is more important or nothing is better than being able to fulfill our dreams and I'm blessed. As you have noticed, we've been, me and my colleagues have been asking a lot about the old days and reminiscing about all your good fights. Um, what do you think that is? What do you think uh, the people has such a love for that era? Nota que muitas perguntas estão sendo feitas sobre o seu passado e as lutas do passado, não só suas, de outros atletas e tal. O que você acha que as pessoas têm uma, uma saudosismo, uma nostalgia tão grande com essa época do MMA? Eu acho que era uma época que era mais dinâmico, né? E era mais selvagem o, o esporte. Né? Então, acho que por isso, hoje em dia, muitas pessoas lutam com as regras debaixo do braço, né? Então, então eu acho que é por isso que tem um carinho por, pelo pessoal de antigamente. Well, I think uh, th those were, were, were great days. That was a great time for the sport, and especially because it was a little bit more of a wild game in the sport still. And that led to some more exciting and memorable moments. Uh, nowadays, a lot of fighters fight with, with the rule book, you know, on, on, on their arms and then trying to split decisions. So back then, everything was more raw. And uh, I think that led to uh, uh, more bigger emotions and people still relate to them. <laughs> 